chapter 17 of Ezekiel. Now, uh, before we continue, just now I said uh, who got drunk. It's not Moab. It was Lord who got drunk. Yeah, and then there was incest committed. And from there uh, came Moab and uh, the Ammonites. So you listen to the recording, then you erase the recording. <laughs> it is a uh, lot of LOT, not more. Okay, now we come to Ezekiel chapter 17. Now in this chapter, it is about the parable of the great eagle. Hey, I thought, hey, parable only New Testament. That's what some people think. No, parables were also recorded for us in the Old Testament. These are just uh, 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 picture stories. These are just uh, 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 earthly stories that people can identify with, but there is a spiritual lesson. So in this parable, you will find first 10 verses, the parable narrated, that means told to us, and then 11 to 18, the parable explained, and then 19 to 21, the parable interpreted. And finally, a new parable. If you are holding on to the original first set of notes, uh, the outline seemed a bit more complicated. Uh, I changed it. I, I thought I'd make it easier. For me. Don't know about you, but for me, easier. Okay, so, Jerusalem. Jerusalem the faithless one. Okay, so verse 1. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, pose a riddle and speak a parable to the house of Israel and say, Thus says the Lord God. Again, why, why don't just tell them as it is. Why don't just warn them? Why don't just scold them? But because these people are not listening. All the years God sent the prophets and so on, they were not listening. So Ezekiel is a bit different. So he has to act it out or now tell riddle or tell a, a parable so that it will capture their attention. A great eagle with large wings and long pinions. These are large, long feathers. Full of feathers of various colors. Came to Lebanon and took from the cedar the highest branch. He cropped off its topmost young twig and carried it to a land of trade. He set it in a city of merchants then he took some of the seed of the land and planted it in a fertile field and placed it by abundant waters and set it like a willow tree. And it grew and became a spreading vine of low stature. Its branches turned toward him, but its roots were under it, so it became a vine brought forth branches and put forth shoots. Are you all following so far? That is the, just the first six verses. Let's continue with the parable. But there was another great eagle with large wings and many feathers. And behold, this vine bent its roots toward him and stretched its branches toward him. From the garden terrace where it had been planted, that he might water it. It was planted in good soil by many waters to bring forth branches, bear fruit, and become a majestic vine. Verse 9 says, Thus says the Lord God, Will it thrive? Will he not pull out, will he not pull up its roots, cut off its fruits? and leave it to wither. All of its spring leaves will wither, and no great power or many people will be needed to pluck it up 
by its roots. Behold, it is planted, will it thrive? Will it not utterly wither? When the east wind touches it, it will wither in the garden terrace where it grew. So you read four chapters in the morning, four chapters in the night, I finish three more chapters and then I can say, I've done my duty today and I go. But is it easy to understand this parable? Not easy, right? So you, you have to understand the context and, and, and to understand what God is trying to say to the people. Because all, all this that are happening, all that had happened before, that means Northern Kingdom had really been taken to exile uh, and some people, Ezekiel, Ezekiel was also taken to exile, right? But he was the second batch. So first batch went with Daniels, he's the second batch. So things already happened. Now, if he does anything, is to maybe prevent the third batch. Hey, please don't come where we go, where we have gone. Not a good place to go. Yeah, and tell the people up in the north, the first and second batches, please repent, so we can go back. But all these were falling on death ears. But these events, they know. So, God said, tell them a parable. And this parable surely must relate to their situation. Don't tell them something that, you know, just for a joke. No, it is not. It is for them to appreciate, to understand. So, in this parable, the great eagle is King Nebuchadnezzar. The great eagle is King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Or if you, instead of a person, you say it's a nation, then the nation is Babylon. Because at that point in time, at that point in time, the superpower of the world is Babylon. A Syrian empire already went down, so it is the Babylonians. After the Babylonians, you have the Middle Persian. But that's later. So now it's the Babylon. So anyone will know. Like today, I ask you, who is the superpower of the world? Now. USA. And some people say, hey, this chapter 17, this parable is about USA. Because USA, you look at their flag, huh? eagle, the great, it's nothing to do with USA. It is Babylon. A great eagle with large wings and long pinions. So large, you know, eagle is actually the supreme bird. It is one, I believe, the only bird uh, that can look straight into the sun and so the eyesight is great and if with these large wings and pinions feathers uh, they are very steady in the air and they are very swift very fast and that's why when they spot a prey they can just go down and pick up the prey so full of strength and great speed is this eagle and if you look at babylon it is it was the the, the superpower it got large army got, got their chariots, their horses and everything. They were super power. Full of feathers of various colors. That means uh, no, I didn't I didn't I didn't I think you know what an eagle looks like, right? So I didn't have a picture for you. But the feathers full of various colours, that means oh got red, got pink, got blue, got yellow means what? They have captured, they have brought many nations under their control. Follow me? Because they were coming down from the north, they captured Tyre, they captured this, they captured this, they even went all the way to Egypt. So all these were their prizes. They captured all these countries. Came to Lebanon. Now, eh? Lebanon, Lebanon, it's not Judah, right? But in this parable, Lebanon is a picture of Judah. Why? Because Lebanon, Lebanon has got nice waters. Lebanon has got beauty. Lebanon has got very strong cedar trees. So it speaks of majesty, it speaks of grandness, it speaks of uh, uh, strength. And Judah was like this. Judah, at the 
during the reign of Solomon was really grand and majesty. But now the great eagle has come to Lebanon, but it's not Lebanon the country. Eh? It's only a picture, a picture of Judah. And took from the cedar, cedar is the strong tree, and took from the cedar the highest branch. So in the tree, the branch is stick out the highest. Eh? Take it. That is the picture of the king of Judah. The king of Judah. So, the people listening to this parable, they know because by now, by now, they know that uh, uh, the first batch of exile went ready. Judah, first batch. Daniel went and the friends went with them. At, at that point in time, at that point in time, who was the first king that went? Who was the first king that went? Jehoi R.S. But, yeah, he was the one taken away. But, he was taken, if you read, uh, he was taken to Egypt. So, can't be him. Can't be him. So, the next one is Joy Akim. Yeah. And then, after that, you have Joy Achin. So, the one the one who was taken, the one who was taken to Babylon is Joy Achim. Okay, so we look at the, let's see, uh, verse, Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah 48, verse 40. This is just to refresh our memory. Jeremiah 48, verse 40. No, that one is talking about eagle. Well, I want to show you who who was taken to Babylon? Okay, then I tell you, we just jump straight to 2 Kings 24, verse 12. 2 Kings 24. Second Kings 24, verse 12. read from 2 Kings chapter 24 verse 10. At that time, are you there? Okay, you look at the screen. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against the city, as his servants were besieging it. Then Jehoiachin, king of Judah, his mother, his servants, his princes, and his officers went out to the king of Babylon, and the king of Babylon, in the eighth year of his reign, took him prisoner. Took him prisoner and took all, if you read on verse 13, it took them all the way and he carried Jehoiachin captive to Babylon. So, but before that, before that, I want to show you where is what happened to Joy Akin. Akin. Okay, we turn to the beginning of 24. Joy Akin, Joy Akin. Sorry, I can't 
can't find the reference. But anyway, for the parable here, verse chapter 17 of Ezekiel, verse 3, and he took from the cedar the highest branch. So at that point in time, this was referring to King Jehoi Achin, who was taken, as we have just read, he was taken, they were carried away to Babylon. And he cropped off, verse 4, and he cropped off its topmost young twig. He cropped off its uppermost top, young twig. Who are these people? These are the smart people of the society. These are the leaders. These are the people who can, uh, uh, who are the wise men of the nation. Just like the Kermel Roach when they went into Cambodia many years ago, what did they do? All the academics, all the businessmen, all the successful smart people, what did they do? They killed them. So that there will not be smart people to come and challenge the invaders. So, same thing, he took all these people as part of the deportation exile and brought them back to Babylon. So, of course, Joy Achin and his sons went as well and carried it to a land of trade. He set it in a city of merchants. So, back then, the superpower, Babylon, was the city of trade. It, it, people go there for trade and merchants. It was so rich. So, that is referring to Babylon in this parable. Then he took some of the seed of the land. So, after... After all this joy Achin, after joy Achin was carried, joy Achin was carried away, away <coughs> with his family and all, the, carried up north. Who was left behind? There were still some people. And this, the next exile will be the third exile in 586. So okay. now is only the second exile. So what happened? Then he took, now for the people listening to Ezekiel, the first two exiles they, they, they already know. They already know Joy Achin was taken away. But the next one is the third exile. And who is the king after Joy Achin? Jether, Zedekiah. Then he took some of the seed of the land and planted it in a fertile field. So, to plant it in a fertile field so that it can grow. He placed it by abundant waters and set it like a willow tree. So he wanted, he wanted this seed to grow, to blossom. In other words, Zedekiah, I plant you, I make you king. I want you to grow. I want you to be faithful. Pay me the Pay me the, the tribute. Pay me the money and so on. Just behave yourself. Just grow. It's okay. And set it like a willow tree and it grew and it became a spreading vine of low stature. A spreading vine. Not one, not a plant that stands up tall. But a spreading vine of low stature. Means what? It's bowing down a picture of Zedekiah and his people bowing down to Nebuchadnezzar. They are in subservient. They are subservient to the king of, Nebu or of Babylon. So, and it grew and became a spreading vine of low stature. Its branches turned toward him. Who is him? Nebuchadnezzar. They bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. But its roots were under it. So they were still, they were still in Jerusalem, but they were bowing down to Nebuchadnezzar. So it became a vine, brought forth branches and put forth shoots. So it is growing, though it is not standing up like a cedar tree. Cedar tree, because the cedar tree, the highest branch, was already taken away. So now they are only vines, not cedar, and they are bowing down. So, looks okay lah. If you tahan a while, if you if you bite the, eat some humble pie and, and, and just behave yourself, you should be left in peace. But 
that is verse 7. But, verse 7, it is Zedekiah breaking the covenant. So you make you make a covenant with Nebuchadnezzar, you promise, okay, okay, I behave myself, okay, okay, uh, I, I will look after the people, I'll send you the money and so on. But, Zedekiah instead turned to another eagle. This eagle is to the south. This eagle is Egypt. But there was another great eagle with large wings and many feathers. And in this parable, it is a picture of Egypt. So we find, okay, the great first great eagle is Babylon up in the north. Then we find a second eagle. This is Egypt. And of course, this is a Pharaoh. And behold, this vine bent its roots toward him. Earlier we read, this branch, branches of the vine bent towards Nebuchadnezzar. Now it is bending south to the Pharaoh. In other words, Zedekiah was not keeping the covenant he made with King Nebuchadnezzar and stretch its branches toward him. He's like, hey, I need help. I need you. I'm counting on you. Stretch its branches toward him. From the garden terrace where it had been planted, that he might water it. It was planted in good soil by many waters to bring forth branches bear fruit and become a majestic vine. Say, thus says the Lord God, will he try? Will he not pull up its roots, cut off its fruit, and leave it to wither? All of its spring leaves, all of its spring leaves will wither. Now, God is a covenant-keeping God. God will not be too pleased if you break the covenant. And God allowed the Babylonians to come and discipline Judah. And God allowed this Judah to have this covenant with Nebuchadnezzar. To me, I think it's a bit of, not, not a bit, it's mercy. So you don't have to be taken into exile to go up to the north. Your first... <coughs> The first two batches have already gone, but if you behave yourself, you can stay here, you need not go. That's mercy, right? Keep the covenant. And God expects us to keep covenant, even with Nebuchadnezzar, a non-believer. But you have made a covenant, keep the covenant. It is in God's will, in this situation. But now, again, Judah, to Zedekiah, turn southward, break the covenant with the north, and turn to the south. So God is saying, will it prosper? While you are here, up on the roof and planted there, watered and so on, you are prospering, you got fruits. But now you are breaking that covenant, God is saying, actually this kind of question, I no need to answer. It's rhetorical. Will it try? Uh, will it try? No. You will not try. Will he not pull up his roots? Yes. He will pull up. That's why you have the third example. Cut off his fruits, leave it to wither. All of his spring, spring leaves are green in color. They will all wither. And no great power or many people will be needed to pluck it up by his roots. What does this mean? Judah, by then you will be so weak don't need a lot of effort to pull you up because God has cut off your source and your resource. So no great power or many people will be needed to pluck it up, pluck you up by your roots. Behold, it is planted. Will it try? Will it not utterly wither when the east wind touches it? It will wither in the garden terrace where it grew. Formerly it was blossoming in the garden terrace. Now it will wither. The east wind. If you if you know the map of Israel, 
The west is the Mediterranean Sea, right? The east is the desert, right? So you rather have sea breeze or desert breeze? <laughs> sea breeze, uh, the east uh, from the desert is hot and with sand. So that is a picture of judgment. The east wind will be blowing in your direction. So you will wither in the garden terrace where it grew. So now, God will explain, God will explain the parable. So in fact, He already explained. Now is, no, not yet. This is verse 11. Okay, I haven't. So God will explain the parable from verse 11 to 18. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Say now to the rebellious house, Do you not know what these things mean? Tell them, Indeed, the king of Babylon went to Jerusalem. So this is the first great eagle. And took its king. And so at, at that point, it joined Achin. So took its king and princess. This is the topmost branch in the cedar tree. And led, led them with him to Babylon. That's what we read, 2 Kings chapter 24. And he took the king's offspring, which we read also earlier in, in verse 4. He cropped off his topmost young took and so on. So, and he took the king's offspring, made a covenant with him, and put him under oath. Early on, we didn't know he, put, he made oath, right? But now it is recorded for us. He put him under oath. So, made a covenant. He also took away the mighty of the land, that the kingdom might be brought low and not lift itself up. That's why they were bowing down the vine. But, but, that by keeping his covenant, it might stand. So if you keep the covenant, if you keep the oath, you will remain in the land of Judah. But, but, he rebelled against him. Who? But Judah rebelled against Babylon. Jedekiah rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar by sending his ambassadors to Egypt that they might give him horses and many people. Will he prosper? Will he who does such things escape? Can he break a covenant and still be delivered? Answer is no. We must keep the covenant because our God is a covenant keeping God. Even though Nebuchadnezzar is of the world, but if it was a covenant, we've got to keep it. Yeah? So I am the church, you are the contractor. You contractor, you are not worshipping in my church, you are not a believer. So I can choose not to pay you. I can break the covenant. I cannot. You have made, you have, you have to keep. So some people say, hey, uh, I'm married. Now I become Christian, but my, my, my spouse not Christian. Then I'll break her. Find a new wife. Yeah. No. It is a covenant. Yeah. Verse 16. As I live, says the Lord God, Surely in the place where the king dwells who made him king, whose oath he despised and whose covenant he broke, with him in the midst of Babylon he shall die. So Jehoiachin went up, okay? Zedekiah also eventually also went up. Nor will Pharaoh, nor will Pharaoh with his mighty army and great company do anything in the war. When they heap up a siege mound and build a wall to cut off many persons. When the rain came, Nebu, no, the, the Pharaoh of Egypt uh, never come up with umbrella lay. So you call them fair weather friends, right? When things are okay, uh, oh, you're a good friend. But when it rains, uh, 
Egypt, Egypt, where are you? <laughs> Never came to help. <clears throat> so Zedekiah, you know, he escaped by night from court, went to Ribla, eyes taken off. Before, before that, his kids were killed in front of him. Then he was taken up into uh, Babylon and he died there. Prophecy came through. But you know, when all this was spoken, has it happened? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But still, the people of Judah listen. They didn't. They didn't repent. So, verse eighteen. So he despised the oath of breaking by breaking the covenant, and in fact gave his hand, and still did all these things. He shall not escape. He shall not escape. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, as surely, the, now is the fourth, third part, the parable interpreted. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, as I live, surely my oath which he despised, and my covenant which he broke. You know what God is saying? That oath you made with Nebuchadnezzar is whose oath? My oath. God. God is aware. He allows it. And my covenant, which he broke, I will recompense on his own head, on Zedekiah's head. And I will spread my net over him. And he shall be taken in. He shall be taken in my snare. So that's divine judgment. I will bring him to Babylon and try him there for the treason which he committed against me. All his fugitives with all his troops shall fall by the sword, and those who remain shall be scattered to every wind, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And all this punishment, because why? Because they went against the Lord. The last part, a new parable. And the word there is Messianic, pointing to the Messianic kingdom, pointing to Jesus. So, thus says the Lord God, I will take also one of the highest branches of the high cedar and set it up. I will crop off from the topmost of his young twigs a tender one and will plant it on a high and prominent mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it, uh, and it will bring forth boughs, 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 these are large branches, and bear fruit, and be a majestic cedar. Now, you see the comparison. When we started looking at this chapter, it was a great eagle who came to take the highest branch of the cedar tree and then to crop off the, the topmost twigs, uh, the young ones. And what did he do with all this? Brought them to Babylon, right? In the, into the city of trade, city of merchants, land of trade, bring them up to the north. But now as we come to the last part of this chapter, it is restoration. Restoration. As we study all the prophets, we, I mentioned right that there is restoration. And who is take, who is doing the job now? It is not a great eagle. It is our great God. And yes, the great eagle took the branches, the, the highest branch. God also took. He took one of the highest branches and set it up. And he also crop off the topmost of the young twigs, tender ones. And where will he plant them? In Babylon? In the city of trade, city of merchant? No. He plant them in Jerusalem. On a high and prominent mountain. High and prominent mountain refers to Jerusalem. Because if you go to Jerusalem, you are always going up. It is on high ground. So, the chapter started with the eagle taking things away from Judah to Babylon. Now God is restoring, God is reversing. 
He's taking it and he's going to plant it on a high and prominent mountain. This is a God of mercy, of grace. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it. I will plant it. That means what? Hasn't happened yet. This is future. And it will bring forth boles, which are large branches, and bear fruit, and be a majestic cedar. Now, if you go to Israel, you can see evidence of that. But that is only evidence, because in the last days, there will be more. But it is definitely fruitful. They are now exporting food and, and whatever to the rest of the world. Under it will dwell birds of every sort. Now, if you, you're, you don't have trees, uh, birds won't come, right? If your trees can't feed them, uh, they also won't come. If your trees got no leaves, no shelter, the birds also won't come. Right? But now you have everything. You are fruitful. So, under it will dwell birds of every sort. In the shadow of its branches, they will dwell. And all the trees of the fields shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree and exalted the low tree. So, that means all the trees. We are not talking about uh, kindergarten stories here. This is like a parable. So, all the trees of the field, that means all the people, not only in Judah, but in the surrounding nations, they will know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree. Who is this high tree in the parable? and exalted the low tree, the low tree that was bowing low, Judah, Israel. So eventually, when God shall restore, He will bring down the superpowers of the world, He will bring down the high tree, the Antichrist and His kingdom, and then He will exalt the low tree. The low tree in the parable was Israel, was Judah. Dry up, the green tree and made the dry tree flourish. So where was the green tree? Up in the north, you go to Babylon, you go to Lebanon, oh, the trees are very green, full of you know, nutrients. But God is going to dry up the tree. But the tree that was uh, uh, dry was the tree in Judah. And now God is saying, I will make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it. Eh, but not yet. Eh? But when God say, I have spoken and have done it, that means what? It will come to pass. It will. It, it, in God's calendar, timetable, it's already done. But for us, we say we are here, but the, the, it is happening. But as far as God is concerned, it's settled already. I really plan it that it is done. Okay. Now it's just waiting for it to happen. In our time or beyond. Okay? So, what do we learn from this short chapter? I mean, compared to 16, this is short, right? If we walk away from God, then the only consequence huh, is disaster. If we walk away from God, then the result is disaster. Stay with him. Stay with him. Okay. So, that is chapter 17.